Welcome, fans. It's time for Friday Night Football. And now, from Farmer State Bank, Ben Knight. Ben Knight, what do you got for us? Ron, we have a ton of excitement tonight, dedication, and a commitment to excellence. Come be a part of our team at Farmer State Bank and join us on Friday night as we celebrate the Crusaders, the Fighting Irish, the Falcons, and the Raiders. And remember, it's as easy as FSB. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Tom Domney, W. W. Nelson Company. We're a full service wholesaler specializing in plumbing, irrigation, and industrial products. We are committed to building long-term relationships with our customers by earning your business every day. With a staff that collectively offers more than 50 years of expertise, our team knows your industry. We're able to answer your questions and are ready to help you get the parts and equipment you need. At Dublin Wood Nelson, our goal is long-term success of your business. We achieve that goal with a simple commitment, doing things right one customer at a time. Our showroom is complete with the latest styles and fixtures. Stop by and see us at 507 Airport Road or give us a call at 478-272-3585 That's Dublin Wynn Nelson. Hi, I'm Perry Williamson and we've been baking here at Williamson's Bakery since 1927. We're famous for donuts, cookies, pies, cakes, brownies, cheese straws, whatever you need. Come see us. At Williamson's Bakery, we put a little extra love in everything we make. Williamson's Bakery, check us out on Facebook, call ahead or just come on down and get some. Since 1916, Gravely has been designed, engineered, and made right here in the USA. Whether you prefer gas or electric, every Gravely has been forged with the commercial landscaper in mind. So they're not only built to last, but to also keep you riding comfortably from dawn to dusk. So ask yourself, are you ready to graduate to a Gravely? Find your new Gravely mower at Myers Equipment and Supply, 301 North Jefferson in Dublin. Good morning and welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm here with Head Coach and Athletic Director of Dublin High School, Roger Holmes. Coach, a uh, lot going on. This week, uh, we, we'll recap last week, the region championship game that we came up a little bit short with Swainsboro and then, then move into uh, where we want to be playing our best football, which is this week. Uh, tough loss against Swainsboro. They brought a, uh, a really tough team in here. We knew they were going to be tough. At number one, I'm telling you, he did everything but run over there, put the headset on, tell the coaches upstairs what play he was going to run, run back in there and run it. I mean, uh, it, it was a tough loss. Uh, hadn't seen, haven't seen a, a kid like that overtake a game against us in a while. Well, he was a phenomenal player. He uh, ran for over 220 yards. He had uh, and wasn't their two, quarterback. Two touchdown catches. Uh, he had an intercepted pass against us in the red zone. Made a couple other plays, but uh, I think his name was Demario Jones. Right. Uh, junior? He's a junior. Uh, he's got several offers already, and if you're looking for a uh, Division I prospect, I think that's a kid to take a look at because he's, he's about 6'1", about 190, runs really well. We knew their speed would be phenomenal, but, you know, I think point blank, the game was won in the trenches the other night. Uh, Swainsboro was able to stymie our run game for the better part of the night. But they also were able to hold on to the football for 35 minutes of the 48-minute game clock. Which prohibited us from having the we, ball, but yeah, we, uh, we ran 31 five, six times. snaps, I think, in the course of Jeez. the night. We really had the ball five times. Uh, when you had an opportunity to do something with it, we, we gave up uh, very disappointing. We gave up a fourth and 23 for their first touchdown. We had two DBs there, and that young man moved the quarterback out to wide receiver, went up between those DBs and came down with it, turned it into a touchdown, and then uh, we got a, a DB or two that got out of position right there with 40 seconds to go in the half, right. and we gave up a long pass down the middle of the field to the four-yard line, 
and then uh, the same young man lined back up at wide receiver and called a fade route over in the corner and put them up 21-7 at the half. We had one of our offensive drives we scored. One of the offensive drives we were stopped on the two-yard line. We had a nice punt return from Mike O'Neill down the start of the drive on the plus 35. Ended up throwing an interception on fourth down. Uh, stopped that drive. Uh, could have then, been could have been 14 to 14 if, and a half if, probably. If we make a couple of plays in the secondary, 7-7 uh, seven, seven at the half. Yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, see where it went in the second half. You know, they did score on a long run. Uh, uh, from number one, right. He finally got out in the open and turned it into a 70-yard touchdown run, and then uh, we tried to answer back. Like I said, got stopped on the two. So, uh, you know, as we've talked, I think Swainsboro is a team that has every opportunity to make a deep run in the playoffs. I think if we make a couple of plays, we're in that game and, and no doubt and able to compete with that team. Uh, I think playing a team of that caliber simply gives you uh, hopefully right. a little bit of understanding about what it's going to take to be successful through this playoff run. And uh, Shucks, if you want to, we'll go ahead and squeeze our break in and come back and look at some of the highlights from the other night's game. There were some highlights. Ramonte Darty had a good game for you defensively. Yeah, Ramonte. Uh, Ramonte um, balled out the other night. Now he, right. he was in. Uh, he had 11 solo tackles, three assisted tackles, three tackles for loss. Created a lot of havoc uh, for their offensive uh, football team. And then he played solid on the offensive right. side as an offensive lineman. And uh, and that's really without coming off the field because he covers kickoffs and, and everything else. So We're proud taking, of the way yeah. he played. Yeah, I always like to talk about We've talked a lot about Swainsboro and what they did. I mean, they won the game, but nevertheless, it shows about doubling football and what our kids do. Exactly. And uh, I like to bring their names to the forefront of the show. We'll take a break, come back and see some highlights. North, South, East, or West, Friendly Gus is on your way today. Fuel up with Friendly Gus's delicious breakfast, made fresh every day. Your wallet and your belly will thank you. Friendly Gus has everything you need for football season. Choose from our 20, 40, and 60 piece chicken finger and wing platters. And don't forget the tater logs. Friendly Gus is your one stop shop for tailgating parties. Our food is always fresh and our service is always friendly. Friendly Gus, on your way today. Also shop Cochran Brothers Cash and Carry at 320 South Jefferson in Dublin for additional tailgate items like paper products, chicken wings, bulk drinks, spices, sauces, and more. Automax, your local repair shop, family owned and operated. Our mechanics are all ASE certified for 100% satisfaction guaranteed. We service all makes and models, foreign and domestic. So come see us at Automax for complete auto repair. We offer certified auto repairs, mufflers, brakes, engine repairs, diagnostics, struts, suspension, and a whole lot more. That's Automax. 707 Kellum Road, Dublin. Call us at 606-6868. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Automax. Matt Hatchett, your District 150 representative for Lawrence, Trutland, and Johnson Counties, is proud to support our local high schools, our East Lawrence Falcons, Trinity Crusaders, the Dublin High Fighting Irish, the West Lawrence Raiders, the Trutland County Vikings, and the Johnson County Trojans. Matt Hatchett your District 150 representatives. Go team! Hello, I'm Andy Cullins at Cullins Supply. Bad Boy Tractor's built to carry the load around your farm or property. We're building a legendary Bad Boy brand by introducing a new line of small or medium-sized tractors that maintain our history, combining power, performance, and build quality while delivering the highest value in their class. With a tractor size to fit any farm from landscapers to ranchers. Bad Boy tractors are positioned to be workhorses in the field. Coupled with our line of Bad Boy implements and cutters, you're all set to make your workday feel less like a chore. Visit us at Cullen Supply, 910 East Jackson Street in Dublin, or 826 South Harris Street in Sandersville. It's that time of year when we come together to support our team. And our team here at Dublin Chevy Buick GMC 
is here to support you. Let's take a test drive. Go, just get out there. Run! Whether it's helping you with your next purchase or just servicing your current vehicle. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. We've got your Chevrolet ready and enjoy your vacation. North and south! There's a nip in the air and the games have been played and we're in mid-season form here at Dublin Chevrolet Buick GMC. And we're back, Coach. See what we got here. Well, it looks like this first one here is basically going to be a pass out in the flats pretty quickly. Uh, a nice little stop route. They were backed off, giving us a little bit of room. It was about a third and seven. So that was a big conversion on a first down right there. And uh, that ball went out there or? No, that's uh, uh, Martravius O'Neill. Martravius, right. a couple right. of catches the other night. He's Can't been working. He's kind of mixing in between wide receiver as well as uh, uh, running back, but a good route and a nice throw. I thought Micah threw the quick game really, really well the other night. He quick a, release there. He did a good job. Here's the same route again. Again, it's the same third and about seven or eight, and there's uh, uh, Baldwin maybe? Uh, Trey, yeah, Trey Baldwin yeah. making that catch. I, Trying to say Martravius, but that was Trey. I could see his hair. Yeah. <laughs> and again, a, a real good throw, kind of threading the needle, and Trey expand, expanded, went up and got it and, and did a good job. Well, here's 19 again, uh, running the stop route, and they're playing it a little bit closer. Of course, number one's over there now. We'd been throwing at 10, and they started sending number one across. And... Uh, but nice run after catch right there right. also. Kind of got him out of position there. And Trey went up, pointed that ball, high pointed it. And here's uh, this play is uh, right before the end of the half. Cam Hampton running the power sweep back into the weak side. And actually this is the play that we ran on the goal line there on fourth and two. And we got shut down on it uh, at that time. But nice breakaway run by Cam. We thought he played a a pretty solid night for us right there. Cam's uh, been solid all year for Cam's us. Cam's getting better. He you know, has. His uh, practice habits have improved. He's done a real good job for us in that area. We're running a little inside veer right here. Uh, nice read by the quarterback on the give. Damari Foster making a tackle. And, Picking up a nice uh, nine yard gain for us right there. Well, we moved the ball well at times, and then you get to the red zone and we had a little. Yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 it was frustrating. We did some good things. Here's the draw. We haven't run it in two or three weeks, but again, that's Damari Foster uh, on a third and six. And if you notice now, we've had a couple of third and sevens, a couple of third and sixes. That's really not what you anticipate and want to have a lot right. of in the style of offense that we run is being able to pick up those third and medium, third and longs. Here's a nice run again by Cam Hampton. It's our buck sweep, but he gets tripped up right there. It's a nice little scene, but they ended up getting a penalty with it. We've got a first and 10. We come back and try to pop the draw again, and we do a good job of it opening up. And Damari has another solid run, gets his shoulder pads down, and uh, finishes the run physical against their free safety. Offensive line did a good job of executing the play. Uh, this needed a little bit better downfield blocking to turn it into a long one. Another quick hitch on the outside uh, on a second and long. And we changed our formations up here. We went to two split ends. Because you remember right. a minute ago, number one, like to pick the hitch. Right. And this was basically okay, whichever side 10 lines up on, let's go with him. And uh, see what we can do over on that side of the field. So. Nice throw out of Micah, good route, good catch again by Martravius O'Neill. And here was a touchdown run with, uh, I think Cam Hampton may have run the ball down to about the one foot line. Right. And there's Micah O'Neill sticking it in the end zone. 
defensive clip here. And that's kind of exactly the kind of night that uh, Ramonte Darty had. He's getting a nice reach block from them. He gets good separation, comes off and makes the play. Uh, very dominating performance from him the other night. Now, he, he played really, really well. Going up a guy much larger than him, too. Well, there. he's got some weight on him. Yeah, There's well. no yeah. question about that. Darty's technique's gotten better. Oh, he, you know, we're we're certainly going to miss him and Des Gilbert both there at those defensive end positions. But there's Ramonte again. You can show that one again. With a good get off, uh, they tried to run the counter, and he was upfield and beat the beat the guard who's coming across to block him. He beat him off the football. Uh, had a third and long. We were anticipating pass, so he probably had a go call. But he's athletic enough to redirect and and make a nice play. I think everybody in the stadium on both sides heard that hit. Here he is again, fighting off the reach block, making the play. Pretty good job of fitting the outside zone and stringing it out all the way across the field. There's the highlights that we picked out from the game. And well, you wouldn't think with a, a dominating game that Swainsboro had that we would have that many highlights. Now, we showed a lot of highlights there, so Dublin did move the ball at times. We were just unfortunate when we did get the red zone, we didn't get our points. Well, you got to finish. Right. You know, you got to finish. and. And I think we've got to do a little bit better job this week. And when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Pelham, what they bring to Dublin, Georgia this week in the first round of the playoffs. And it's going to be an extremely tough matchup for us. And we'll talk right. about it when we come back. Coach, uh, we'll take a break and have a word from our sponsors. And we'll be right back and talk about Pelham. Call Mr. Appliance for our speedy expert service. Are your appliances not performing correctly? Call 309-5960. Mr. Appliance of Dublin is your go-to company for dependable quality appliance service. Our experts are committed to delivering exceptional results in a timely manner, whether you need repairs, replacement parts, or general maintenance. Technicians are available on your schedule and always provide courteous, respectful, and quality work every time. Our technicians always explain and ensure understanding so you'll never encounter surprise fees. Trust Mr. Appliance for residential and commercial repair, service, and maintenance. Call 309-5960. That's 309-5960. 309-5960. Serving Dublin and the surrounding area, Mr. Appliance and Speedy Expert Service, a locally owned and operated franchise. And now the starting lineup for the number one realty company in Dublin and Lawrence County, Century 21, Brian Howell, Charlene Lamb, Adam White, David Deves, Jennifer Bradley, Jay Bradley, Jim Jarrett, Ruth Watson, Charlene Bratley, Raina Doverly, Yvonne Robertson, and broker George Durden. Count on the winning team to help you score every time. For more information, log on to c21dublin.com or call us at 478-272-1535. The winning team, Century 21, Durden Cornegay. First Lawrence Bank invites you to experience banking at its best. Whether you have personal or business needs, we're a full service bank big enough to handle all of your banking needs and small enough to provide you with that personal touch you've grown to expect from a community bank like First Lawrence Bank. Looking forward to your future, that's First Lawrence Bank in Dublin and Dexter, member FDIC. 
Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Dustin Gay. I'm a local orthopedic surgeon with Houston Clinic Orthopedics, and we'd really like to invite everybody to come out to our new uh, office facility to take a look at it. It's a larger space with physical therapy, and uh, we're just excited to have it, and we'd love for people to come out and visit us. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. I'm Betty Hall. I've been a member here since 2015 and I enjoy it. And I started because I had retired for a few years, gaining weight, got an invitation to come to the, to the aerobics class and I came and I've been here ever since. And, and the workout, the people are nice. I mean, it's just like a family. I've been here going on eight years and I come almost every day. And I invite you to come, you know, if you want to work out, get your health better, and just meet some wonderful people. I just think you will enjoy it. Allen's Heating and Cooling is your licensed Amata equipment dealer. Trust Allen's Heating and Cooling to install and service your heating and cooling unit. Allen services all brands and with the purchase of a new Amata, offers a lifetime compressor warranty. Call Sean Clark or any of his friendly staff at Allen's Heating and Cooling. Your Amata dealer. Amata lasts and lasts and lasts. And we're back. Coach, uh... First round of the playoff, we want to play our start playing our football, well, best football best. this this week. Uh, got Pelham out of around the Albany, Georgia area coming up here. I looked this morning at something that uh, folks don't talk a whole lot about, and that strength of schedule. Pelham's in the top six in the state of Georgia in Division One A, the start in the state, and uh, strength of schedule. They've played some tough teams, so don't let that three and six record fool you. Well, they're. they're uh they have played phenomenally tough schedule. They uh, region played, one guys. They played Cook County, okay, early first game of the season, and Cook jumped on them pretty good. Now Pelham was a young football team, is a young football team, but time you get through ten games, it's hard to be a young football right. team anymore unless you've had a bunch of injuries and had to bring up a lot of young kids. But they started the year young, and. Uh, so not only did they play Cook, but they played Brooks, they played Irwin, they played Blackley. Uh, that's five games of people you know that are top ten caliber football teams, right. and and they've been in many of those games. Now their head football coach is uh, Coach Guyton. Uh, research on him, he was a quarterback. Uh, at Thomas County Central during the Ed Pilcher days. Now, we Big program. Well, he, they played for, I think, two or three state championships in a row when that young man played there at Thomasville and, and uh, Thomas County. And they were well known everywhere about the split back beer. And that's you Don't that. see that much, do you? Now, I don't know the last time we played <laughs> someone that was a legitimate split back beer team. Now you play teams that run the option, but not necessarily that split back. And the difference is, is how fast they hit the line of scrimmage in that split back veer. You know, when your dive back is coming from the full back position, it hits a little bit slower than it does in that split back veer. Is this kind of like a Georgia Southern thing or? Sort of. I mean, it's it's legit full board. I hadn't seen it. It's full board, triple option football. But instead of having a back right behind the quarterback, they have a back on each side of the quarterback sitting on the outside leg of the guard. Right. They're in a three-point stance. Their hand is a, their hand is about three and a half yards from the ball, and when it snap, they're either running right off the outside leg of the guard right at the head of the center or right at the outside foot of your offensive tackle. And the quarterback is going to put the ball in and decide whether he should keep it or he should give it. And it all starts with that type of offense on giving the football and, and can you stop the dive. And they block it multiple different ways. They'll man block it. They'll do what you call veer blocking where there's a double and, and they're reading a guy 
or they just man block it and they know they're going to give it. And then they'll also use a loop scheme uh, sometimes when they're trying to influence your guy to give the ball. It's going to be smash mouth football again this week. And they're so. big. They're, they have one side of their offensive line goes 290 and about 300. And when those two guys come off, they come off, they're in four point stances, their pad levels down. And we have witnessed and watched them take multiple defensive linemen. And when the play is over, they're 10 yards down the field flat on their back. Our defensive front has got to play ultra low with their pad level. They've got to be able to get down on the ground when the double team is coming and help coming. close up the, the uh, running lanes and not get knocked back into the linebacker lap and force them to have to run a bubble across the top because in that offense, just like with Paul Johnson, four yards is a good football play. Absolutely. And you put four and four and four together. You run it again. Down, and then you run back into the same scenario we had last week where they can control the time of possession and keep the football away from you. And that's kind of what we got away from last week and we anticipate that possibly could happen this week is – Getting Dublin out of the rhythm that they oh, yeah. like to stay in to score, yeah, thirty there, points. There, there's no question that game. Uh, you need some three and outs. You need to get right. them off the field, and 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 we need the possessions. What do you anticipate that your linebackers are going to have to do this week? Because I know this is going to be a different defensive scheme that you've come up with all year long. Well, it'll be there'll be some things that not are, to not to tell a well, story there, here. There, there's going to have to be some things that are different to be able to try to stop what they do. Now, you're not going to fool them because right. that type of offense forces a lot of people to do the same thing on defense, or you're going to be in trouble. Uh, we can't just sit in our four-three and play a three technique and a nine technique on the tight end side and think we're going to stop the dive consistently. Now, you got to play it some because that's what you do, but you got to move your front around and do those type things. So for us, uh, handling the dive, number one, is most important, but their quarterback is their home run hitter. After you take right. the dive, Somebody is always responsible, gonna, and possibly two individuals will be responsible for the quarterback if he decides to keep the football. Yeah. And then you've got the third part of it is somebody is always got to be responsible for the pitch. And uh, so you're gonna have to have some spies. Well, we've got basically. to play, uh, you know, a silent football. Uh, one of the things that's a little bit different, for example, when we go out. A lot of our practice time defensively this week, the offense won't even have a football. Everybody's because it is a triple option. The ball can still end up yep. in three different the places place. when the when you know from the time the ball is snapped. So the key is is to make sure assignment wise you've got everybody where they need to be. Uh, when we look at them defensively, will they throw the ball before we go? To uh, you know they don't want to. Uh, Swainsboro didn't want to, but they heard us doing it. Uh, they Once. run. They it, they're very similar in in passing philosophy to what we do. It's off of play action. Okay, they're right. they're going to fake an option up in there, and then a back's running a wheel route, or the split ends running a quick slant because you're asking somebody out of the secondary to come take the pitch. They're trying to throw it right behind him. So, will they throw it? Yes. Do they want if they could run it for four yards a carry? They would never throw it. Right. And, uh, KDO's still gonna have to pay attention back there. Well, there's a lot. Yeah, not just KDO, yeah. but but we, we we're gonna have to. You know, you you got to be careful about involving all your secondary, or if you do involve them now, somebody has got to make sure they're always over the top. Well, we've got. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, we've got some of our better players. Back there in the defensive secondary for Dublin High School, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you, you seem to have, uh, you know, 
great players on defense it's always. It's almost like you're a Kirby Smart defensive coordinator. I, I, I hate to bring that name up to you. Ah, but, but right, we've got some really, really, really good defensive secondary players, and so it doesn't surprise me the amount of tackles they make and then the interceptions that they, that, they, that they have had this year. Uh, just to, you know, I, part, of the, part of this show is me bragging on those guys. Well, and, and they you have know. had a good year, and I think they're probably a little bit angry about a couple of plays we gave up the other night. But they are, you know, our, our biggest concerns in our secondary and in our defense as a whole is the amount of depth. And when right. I say depth, I'm talking about guys that, can, that are ready to step on the field in a game that's as physical and will have this type of magnitude and not get right light, yeah. you know, uh, stage fright kind of deal. So, well, yeah, with a small school, you're going to have that. We're a little beat up. We're a little banged up. But uh, hopefully everybody will be on the field Friday night. We'll see. Uh, at this point, uh, a little bit of sickness going around and some of that type stuff. I think everybody's kind of dealt with that a little bit this right. year. Uh, when you know we stop and we talk about Pelham defensively, yeah, we'll go to that. You know, they're uh, from the defensive side. They've run out of an eight-man front a great deal of the year. Now we watched them play Irwin County, and when they played Irwin County, they ran a shade strong fifty. And Irwin County's a wing T football team who tends to throw the ball a little bit more than most wing T teams do. Uh, they held. Irwin's run game in check most of the time. There were about three plays, four plays, where Irwin got out and made big touchdown runs. Right. Or big 25 and 30 yard gains. But if you went by the number of times that they held them to three yards or less, they were pretty good, good game. up front defensively. You know, they've got Two D tackles inside. One of them's pretty good size. One of them's pretty small. But they'll uh, when they played Irwin County, they tend to do a lot of cutting, diving, trying to chop the legs out from under your offensive lineman. And you know, I, maybe that's a region one thing because I know uh, <laughs> Coach Freeman down at uh, Brooks County, his kids would do that quite a bit. Who knows? We may have to do some of that Friday night ourselves if they keep rolling out there and double teaming us, knocking us off football. We may have to commit may. Uh, to some D linemen using some cut technique and that type thing. Well, with, with that being said, and, and, and as big as they are and as thick as they are sometimes in the middle, I, I expect uh, possibly you could have some big games on the outside from uh, KDO and, and, and Cam Hampton, maybe, I mean. Uh, just, well, it's going to it's going to be a night where we're going to have to capitalize when we have the football. Now, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, it's very frustrating uh, playing this game of football. A lot of time is about matchups, and their strengths, their right. strengths don't play against our strengths, and that that's the thing that's got to have you a little bit concerned. Is, right? Uh, yeah. I'll is see. it's just. Most 90% of what they do now is going to be from tackle to tackle. So we've got to, you know, we're going to have to be uh, very physical in there. Our linebackers, they won't be tackling in space much and running around. No. If they're going to have success, it's going, we're going to have some scratched up headgears and have to put some new uh, stripes <laughs> on them if we can survive and get to the next round because they'll knock some stickers off our helmets, I'm sure. If, and uh, we better be willing to meet them, as the old Coach Donnelly used to say, mouth to right mouth there. and belly to belly. You, right. you we're going to have to go play. Well, we want to invite everybody to come out to the Shamrock Bowl Friday night at 7.30. Uh, I looked at the weather this morning, Coach. seemed like it always comes into play at one of, one of these games during the year. Looks like possibly Nicole's going to come in here Thursday at 1 o'clock and be gone by Friday at 1 o'clock. Now, this is Tuesday morning. Yeah, and we're talking talk about, and but it looks like uh, one o'clock maybe in the afternoon we're going to clear and be ready for a, a big tailgate out to, in front of the Shamrock Bowl by the your Dublin Touchdown Club uh, festivities going on Friday night. We we want to bring a crowd right again. 
to the Shamrock Bowl. If you're out watching this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, please come out. Dublin is going to be probably the only school in the, in the county playing playing football here at home Friday night. So yeah, uh, get you a ticket on. Want to make sure that go we go fan. over the tickets. Right. Uh, Georgia High School owns rights to all playoff games. We received in an email that all tickets are to be sold exclusively on gofan.com, G-O-F-A-N.com. Type in Dublin. You'll see the game versus Pelham. You purchase your ticket online, okay? And uh, so there will not be any tickets sold at the gate. Ticket office will be closed. Ticket, uh, they'll be there. <laughs> they, they, they've got to check you in. They scan right. your scan your ticket and then it's no good anymore right you can't pass your phone over the fence and give it to somebody else or any of that so you scan your ticket and then that ticket is used but you'll be able to get in the game that way and uh again we hope we have a great crowd we appreciate the people that showed up last week uh, it's week 11. week 11. ever there there's a lot of schools out there that would like to be playing this week and and we're glad that dublin high school has that opportunity. Uh, we don't want to go through what we went through last year. It's no. a tough deal to lose at home in the playoffs. So we need your help. We need your support. And let's get this thing right. We'll be back uh, next week and talk about the uh, Pelham game and the upcoming next game. Thank you, Coach. <laughs>